Hi guys, welcome to Simple Programming. In our previous video, we looked at what is JSON Web Token, what is the history so far, and what is the structure of JSON, and what is the structure of the JSON Web Token, as well as the token component. In this video, we are going to implement that with the Spring Boot application. We are going to take the basic implementation of JSON Web Token in this part one series. In part two series, we'll use the Spring Securities advanced concepts to use with JWT token. Let us take a look at this implementation. So what I have here is I created a simple Spring Boot application, which is going to have the Spring Boot starter web dependency in it. And then I'm going to inject io.json web token dependency to my application. As you might have noticed, I don't have the Spring data security dependency here, which means that I'm not going to use the Spring security components. I'm going to just use a simple filter to show you how to use JWT. I'm just going to use a filter bin to authenticate using JWT, which is to give you an idea of how the basic JWT works. Let's quickly go to our filter. So my filter is a generic filter bin, and I'm going to override the do filter, okay? So what I have done here is, I'm going to accept an authorization here, which is going to be a header, and this authorization is going to contain the actual token along with another element, which is called the bearer. So this bearer is nothing but a text that, you know, prefix the token. You can very well mention it to be token, or you can even mention your own name here, like let's say John, or in some cases you can give a, your application also here. So this is like an initial step to validate before you actually check the token, okay? In this case, I'm going to keep it simple, bearer. So if my header is null, or if it doesn't start with bearer, then I'm going to throw an error right away saying that you're unauthorized. If that succeeds right, then what I'm going to do is, I'm going to pass the token with my signing key. In this case, I'm going to have a, a string that is predefined in my application, but you can, you can use private and public keys to authenticate your application. So I'm going to set my signing key, and then I'm going to pass the token with pass claims, which is going to give me the claims associated with the token because the token comprises of header, payload, and the signature. So it's going to pass the token and give me the different objects present in the token in the claims object. I'm going to set it in the request and then continue my filtering chain. If there is an error here, which means token is invalid, means it's going to throw an error 401 unauthorized. Let's go to our configuration. It's going to be a simple configuration. I'm going to auto wire my filter here and uh, I'm going to create a filter registration bean, which is going to register this JWT filter. And then I'm going to add a URL pattern for which the filter has to be applied. And I'm going to apply this filter on all secured URIs. Let's go to our application. I have a login controller. So we need an initial login controller or a token controller to give the token to the end user, right? So he needs to obtain the token from our application and use this token to access our application resources. So in order to do so, the end user is going to access our application with login token, I mean login request mapping. And when he accesses this method, it's going to give the token to the user. And in this case, what he has to send to me is a client object, which is going to contain the client ID, client name, password text. And I'm going to send back to the user with a token. So basically what you will do is like, once you get the client ID, you will be validating and verifying those elements present in the client object along with the elements that are present in your database. You will be you know, comparing with your database whether the information that is passed to obtain the token is valid or not. Then you will be generating the token. So here, I'm going to use the jwts.builder to build my token. You could see here, I'm going to set the subject, which is going to be my client name, and I'm going to set my customized roles, which is going to be user, and I'm going to set at what time it was issued and I'm going to sign it with uh, the signature algorithm HS256. 
there are multiple algorithms available which you can use to secure your application and in order to sign this algorithm i'm going to use my you know the predefined key so then we i have my application controller which is the actual resource where the user needs to access with the help of a token so in order to access this uri he needs to include the token if this if the user tries to access this resource without a token it should throw an unauthorized exception so that's that's pretty much a very simple example of jwt configuration with spring boot application so let's quickly run this application and let's examine the behavior in postman all right our application is up and running now let's go to our postman so in our postman what we are going to do is we are going to log access the login with the post request the body is going to contain client id which is going to be let's say let's say a retail and the client name i will say retail 12345 the client name is going to be let's say walmart and then you have to give a secret key to right so let's give say a password text is going to be 123 20 all right so this is pretty much what i am expecting from an end user in order to generate a token and give it back to them so when i click on send it should go to my login controller and then generate the key and send it back to me so when i clicked on send okay there is an error here of oh, the client id is a integer So let's say one, two, three, four, five, six. I click on send. So it has returned the token object to me. So I'm going to get this token, and then I'm going to new tab, and then let's go and take a look at our application controller. It's going to be secured app. In the header, what I'm going to do is it's going to be authorization header. and i need to prefix this token with bearer space token so now when i click on send it should give me a response consent okay uh, sorry so the port is 9001 click on send i'm getting welcome your secure let's try to remove this and click on send we have got our error response here which is 401 unauthorized So now do you see how this JWT token works with Spring Boot application without Spring security components you know next video we are going to use the Spring security components and code it in a more professional way thanks for watching guys and please subscribe for more such videos